looking to step into your first role in cybersecurity, today I'm going to break down what to look for, what key skills you should be focusing on, and an overview of some of the popular roles in the industry so that you can figure out what's right for you. Now, this isn't always an option, but picking the right company will make a huge difference to your career progression and general well-being. Before we dive in, here are some things to look out for, both good and bad, when assessing a company. First up, do they have a budget and appetite for training? You're about to step into a junior position, so of course you're going to need some training, support and mentorship. Second, what's the work-life balance look like? I won't talk too much about this today, but you don't want to burn out in your first year. Being overworked coupled with having little experience is recipe for disaster. And finally, what reputation does the company have? Have a look at Glassdoor to see whether it's a good place to work and will future employees look at it and say, hey, that's a reputable company. They must be a good candidate. Some red flags that you want to look out for are any job description that says can work in a fast moving and high stress environment. This is basically a red flag that says hey, my company only employs one person to do the job of three people and then calls it high tempo. The second red flag is vague job descriptions. Whilst we can apply and get more details during the interview, if they don't clearly know what your day-to-day -day will look like or understand what projects are on the horizon, then I would be cautious about this role. And finally, overemphasis on certifications. And this is an interesting one because I've found that managers that prioritize certifications massively over other things often lack practical skills and expertise. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and let's dive in. So first up, let's talk about setting yourself up for success. These days, breaking into your first role is likely the most challenging part of your entire career. So let's start with a roundup of the more generic advice and then we'll look at how you can stand out in some specific roles afterwards. First, we have the fundamentals, of course. The expectations here, of course, can vary from role to role, but really you should have the fundamentals of IT down. This means having basic knowledge of networking, operating systems, software, and in my controversial opinion, there's no excuse for not having basic programming skills in 2023. Next, I'd recommend at least one certification, and there's a lot of debate about what's good and what's bad, but honestly, at this point, the entry-level certifications are not that difficult, so with some effort, you can easily tick these off. And regardless of whether people think they're worth something or not, certifications are likely to open doors for you and help you get more interviews, so there's no reason to not do them. Next on our list, we have the side project, which is something that demonstrates you're interested in the field or passionate about it. And this could be a blog, it could be your home lab setup, it could be a CTF you've built, or a tool that you're working on, or some automation. So definitely make sure you have something that you can talk about in interviews, and you don't need to be working on this all the time, you can just revisit it every so often to keep it alive. And finally, for entry-level roles in particular, interview skills and soft skills, in my opinion, will be the thing that sets you apart from other candidates. If you're equal with someone, they'll pick the person they liked more. And more often than not, hiring managers will actually choose the person they most liked and the person that they want to invest in. So really, there's nothing too groundbreaking here and treat it like a checklist if that helps. And of course, there are other things you can add like more projects and networking and other activities like CTF, but don't get too overwhelmed. Focus on the fundamentals first and then build out from there. The first role we're going to look at is the junior security analyst. Now, we all know that job titles can vary wildly from organization to organization. So when I'm talking about a security analyst, I'm referring to a technical role where the responsibilities might include things like security monitoring, supporting the incident response activities and investigations, reporting, configuring tools, maintaining data sources, etc. There are two key things here. First, general knowledge. And notice I said knowledge here and not experience. General knowledge of a SOC, monitoring and investigation and reporting, etc. This is really the fundamentals that you're going to lean on. So make sure you know the processes and that you have the terminology down so that you're not mixing things up in your interview. The second thing we need to have done is practiced practical scenarios and then also be able to talk through them coherently in an interview. Now, some people might still be going on about how you need experience to land a job to be able to get experience, but honestly, in this day and age, you can get a lot of experience through online training and platforms. 
There are so many available these days that for security analyst roles, for almost any role in security actually, you can go in, get some hands-on practical experience, and then once again, put that in your CV or resume and talk about it during your interview. And for security analysts, Let's Defend.io is a great place to start. The second role we're going to look at is a junior security engineer. And a security engineer generally is honestly like the front line of an organization in terms of its defenses. When you apply for this role, take extra care to read the job description because once again, the day-to-day -day can vary wildly from organization to organization. But typically we're looking at things like implementing and configuring security controls, carrying out internal vulnerability assessments, or following up on those assessments and pen tests to remediate issues. Your foundational knowledge here, in my opinion, needs to be more network-based or system administration and system architecture-based. And of course, you need to understand the common security controls like firewalls, IDS, IPS, AV, EDR, etc., etc. So for this one, don't overlook your fundamentals in networking, common protocols, and things like the OSI model. You're going to get tested on these during your interview. To get some practical experience for this one, you can work with open source tools and also experiment the effectiveness of those tools. For example, there's a lot of debate about which scanners are better than others. So take a vulnerable web app, scan it with some different tools, and see what you find. Then deploy a WAF in front of it and scan it again. By default, did the WAF protect the application? Did some scanners get through still? Does the WAF need tuning? This kind of exercise is going to give you so much experience about deploying, configuring, troubleshooting, and testing or assessing solutions, and honestly, a ton to talk about in your interview. Being able to, as a junior engineer, give insights into the pros and cons of different tools following your testing will instantly show that you can add value to the team. So go ahead, experiment, document your findings, and maybe write a blog post or two about it. Our final role today, we're shifting our focus to the junior GRC analyst. And this role is somewhat different to the two previously mentioned. Governance risk and compliance analysts primarily navigate the intersection between business operations and cybersecurity. They might be tasked with risk assessments, policy development, ensuring regulatory compliance, and liaising with both technical and non-technical stakeholders. So first up, we need to understand the landscape. Knowledge about various applicable regulatory standards and their implementation is essential. You're not just looking at the technical side of security, but the broader organizational and legal landscape as well. So of course, since we're navigating the bridge between technical teams and the organization, good communication here really is the key to being successful. Focus on being able to coherently explain concepts in both technical and non-technical ways, and consider the impacts of security on both sides. Now for your side projects, the focus here will be a little bit less on your home lab and less on the technical projects, but you can bolster this area with things like blog posts and getting familiar with common GRC tools and frameworks so that once again, you have something to talk about in your interview. So that's it for this video. And I hope this helps you focus on the things that actually make a real difference and help you step into the amazing, frustrating, exciting, ever-changing world of cybersecurity. Of course, if you like the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have questions, come and join us on live stream every Tuesday, and I'll be happy to answer them. Catch you next time.